You don't have to take to the jungle like Tarzan to live a sustainable lifestyle. Living a life of sustainability takes knowledge, planning, and commitment. Aloha, this is Brent Norris with Green Collar Technologies. Brent Norris made that commitment. He decided a few years ago he'd like to take a new approach to living, a more sustainable approach. So he left a big metropolitan city on the mainland and headed for the Big Island. I had been working and living in Boston, um, and it had always been my dream to move into the forest and continue that work. So um, that's what I did. So I moved into the forest, built a tree house, um, set up a satellite dish, and got my internet connection to the uh, satellite. Whoa, back up. He lives in a tree house? Well, the uh, tree house started um, not so much as an idea to go and build a tree house, but it was um, what can we afford to live in now that we've spent all our money on the land. So uh, we looked at domes, we looked at tree houses, we looked at all sorts of structures. Um, and uh, it turns out that building a home in the trees was just about the most affordable way uh, to build a structure. Norris saved even more money by using recycled materials in the building of his home, which turned out to be three stories. And then we also found that wasn't enough. We needed to uh, grow some basic food, cut down on our bills, and uh, produce some of our own energy. We were off the grid, so no phone lines, no uh, electrical cables, no water supply, so we had to figure out how to uh, capture the, our own water and then use that as a, uh, both a drinking and a washing supply and cooking supply. So learning how to do these systems, um, when you do that, it becomes your, um, your kuleana to give that back as your neighbors provide that information as you learn it from other sources. Taking the new approach to living gave Norris a greater appreciation for the very basic things in life. In securing his own water source, he learned how to manage water more efficiently. Um, my value system of water completely changed. So I used to think of water as uh, in terms of um, cleanliness or clarity or uh, the way that it tasted. And, and now I think in terms of water as it being wet. Uh, you get a real appreciation for something that's wet. If you don't have a source to go to from a, a faucet regularly, um, when you create your, when you catch your own water, then you're just happy that it's wet, that you can take a shower, that you can cook and, and do these other things. So um, the quality of the water seems to go up with the spirituality of its use. Um, and that is super valuable because we ingest it. Norris says planting a garden and growing some of his own food also instills a greater appreciation for simple, natural living. It's that you're growing some of your own food and supplementing your diet with something that's very healthy and comes from the land, the immediate place where you occupy, where your spirit exists. Living sustainably also increased Norris's spiritualism. He's not just living off the land, he's living in harmony with the land. There's a conversation you develop with the forest by being in the forest. Um, I believe anyone that spends enough time with the trees or in the forest is going to develop this conversation, this observation that there's actually a lot of spirits in the forest and uh, in my time I've had a chance to converse with them. I know that sounds probably strange for a lot of folks that may get this video, but um, for folks that spend time in the forest, uh, they definitely understand. So he had a house, a garden producing basic food, a catchment system for water, generators for energy use, and his conversations with the forest. Norris was well on his way to being sustainable, but he still needed to generate an income. And that's where living off the land took a modern turn. He bought a satellite dish and set up his internet connection. That model um, is something a lot of folks in my area are striving for. They actually. Uh, don't really want to be in the city. They don't want to be in the population centers as much. They want to decentralize. They want to move out into the forest um, or near the forest. And the internet really allows that to happen. And there's a couple of great things about the internet when it comes to sustainability. Not only is it uh, lightweight on the land, meaning you only need a satellite dish, you don't have to uh, have a lot of infrastructure to be successful, but it's also frictionless. So things that occur on the internet are moving around frictionlessly. And that's really good for sustainability. Less friction makes things easier to um, both consume, if you're a consumer, or to produce, if you're a producer. Learning what he did about sustainability, Norris felt compelled to pass that knowledge on. And so it's become my 
mana'o then to show folks that they can actually live lightly on the land. Um, they don't need to go in and bulldoze a lot. Um, they can actually work with the trees and work with the existing environment to produce something that's actually a lot more livable, a lot more comfortable. So if they want to work on the internet, they can still feel like they're actually in the forest. If they want to um, drive and commute to work every day, they can do that too, but they don't have to tear all the trees down to do that. Norris's nonprofit Green Collar Technologies is the conduit between educators and students. Those who know how to live a life of sustainability pass on knowledge to others who want to know how to live lightly on the land. He and other educators across the island offer courses in rainwater harvesting, organic gardening, and alternative energy basics. So in the course of a couple of hours, someone can attend one of our classes. They can understand what some of the, the good foods are to grow, um, meaning easy to grow, easy to get started, uh, low maintenance. And then they're able to do their soil preparation. They're able to uh, understand when to harvest a, a certain food type. And uh, mostly what we're providing is inspiration. Green Collar Technologies is in the High Technology Development Corporation's incubation program. Norris sees that as a valuable asset, especially for the Hilo Innovation Center's high-speed wireless connection. It enables me to come out of the forest with a, a fairly slow internet connection, get a high-speed connection, do all my heavy lifting in town, teach a class in a real classroom, a uh, really nice environment that's close for everyone else to come to, and for us, it provides just tremendous value in being able to do that. So um, I think we're getting a, a, I think we're getting a better end of the stick right now with the uh, incubation program. Norris wants to continue the relationship with HTDC as long as possible, and he says he'd like to be in a position to give back to HTDC to help them get into um, other innovative technologies. So not just working on a uh, frictionless digital economy as we're doing now, but also help them with energy needs, um, to do green IT, so to help the Innovation Center really harness uh, the web and sustainability in a way that makes the center itself more sustainable. Norris says nonprofits have a special responsibility, especially in green technology or sustainability, to be as transparent as possible. Our 501c3 uh, provides all of our budgetary information, all of our expenditures, all of our contracts. Everything that we do is completely transparent and we use our, our website to do that. Living a more sustainable life can be rewarding to you and the planet. More information is available at the company's website at www.greencollartechnologies.com.